Okay, part two, the high school thing. Let's see if I can get this finished for you. Right, so we've got, let's just recap. We have got a little high score menu object that we created that's allowing us to have a little clock. And just as a basic um, line, we can change that line, we can make it a curved path, sine wave, whatever we want. Um, if that's what we want to do and when the clock ends it ends the score entry okay right so high score menu so we've got alphabetic characters let's add um, some characters for the rub and end okay so we've added all the alpha sprites so we're going to manually create a couple of character sprites um, hang on a sec do should we do this? Um, okay, so we've got to add in the rub and end characters. Now, in my, um, you can use any sprite for this, but for my uh, fonts, I've got two special characters uh, for end, um, and we're gonna. What we can do is we're gonna use those. So we're gonna create a sprite called rub and we're going to generate this again from the text manager so we're going to say gm dot text manager um, create character sprite I can't remember what it's called oh sprite generate character produces a sprite for a single character right so this is the one we want so sprite generate character it'll ask us for the font so gm keep to the same font font bank vector uh, it wants to know what character now this is a char so you've got to use a single quote uh, and the rub character is a less than character now if you're using your own font you just don't use this text manager thing just generate your own graphic for your sprite that's as easy as you can do it uh, the size need to make it the same size as this so that's one and the color was white although we're changing the color anyway with the select and deselectors Okay, so that will create that. Then we need to position it manually. So we're going to say rub.x, and I'm going to put this all on one line. Um, so, in fact, actually, it's easier to say position 2D equals, and that will be a new vector 2. And we want to sit this. So we've got screen, screen size.right minus 200 is our very right hand character, which is our space. So I want to be across from that. So I'm going to pick. GM and I might have to adjust this because it's not going to be right. So I'm going to say right minus uh, one. Let's try 170. Oh, do me. Uh, and then the height. Well, we know the height. That is going to be the center of the screen. So GM dot screen size dot center y. Okay. So that's going to set the position. Um, in fact. I want to set the Z value as well, so I'm going to use the full vector three position. I'm just going to change that. Or so I'm going to set that as a thousand because I, I set the other ones to a thousand up here when I did that. Right now, I need to manually add it to my menu. So the my menu is this, and I'm going to say add well, add item. I'll get it right in a minute. Uh, and then we say so we say new menu item. And the debug name for this I'm going to call rub. That's going to be significant. And we've just created the sprite called rub. Okay. Right, so that's added the rub character. And now let's add the return character, the end character. So I'm just going to. No, I'm not. I was going to copy and paste there, but that's dangerous. So I'm going to create another one. Call it end. Same thing. I'm using my text manager again. Sprite generate character. Now, again, I'm going to go for the same font. So I'm going to use my vector font. The character this time. Now, I can't remember what the name for this is. It's the, on my laptop, it's the key underneath escape that looks like a, well, it's like a horizontal line with a bit sticking down. You might be able to see, it. yeah, that character. That will generate an end display. So all my fonts have got that as well. So it'll say the words rub, and this one will say the words end for that character. But it is just a graphic. You could define your own 
frame if you wanted to. Um, set the same size, color dot white. Okay. Right, so I'm going to set this position of this. So end up position oh, equals new vector three. Right, so I want to do gm dot screen. So this has got to go across from the rub, which is moderately long. Uh, I'll try 100. So it's 100 in from the edge. So we'll, we'll see where that's going to go. I want the height to be center Y and stick it at 1,000. Okay, so I'm going to add it now to the menu. So add item, um, new menu item. And I'm going to call it end because that's how I'll refer to it. And it's going to be my end sprite. Okay, right. Oh, I need a capital C on the colour. Oh, I've spelled it. Oh, I've spelled it correctly. Sorry there. Spell it like the Americans. Right, let's just run that and see what that looks like, and then we can adjust the positions if it's a bit dodge. Oh, done something stupid. Uh, oh, I've done a track. Oh, oh yeah, no, 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 I've done that. Right, what I've done, that's crashed, because I only created 27 points in my track. I mean, that's a bit of a pain, isn't it? And I've gone and added two more characters. Hmm. So what I might try and do, just as a test, I might see what will happen. It's the spacing that's the issue here. I'll try it this way. Let's just comment those two lines out. Uh, and run it again. Oh, I've still not changed it to 29. Uh, 29, 29, 29, make 29 points. But I think the, the rub and the end are gonna overlap a little bit. Oh no, no, we got away with it, I think. Yeah, so there's the space, rub, end. They slightly sit on top of each other. But I can fix that by altering the Z. Right, so I'm gonna leave it like that because that's fine for me. If you do have a problem, I'll show you how you can extend or add a couple of points to your track. Okay. Um, to do that, that's not a problem. But I'll do that on an individual business. So right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say Z plus, Z equals 1010 on when we're highlighting a Right, and when we're not, I'm going to set the Z to 1000, and that will force the selected one to be behind. So if I run that again, there you go, the rub's over the top, so that's fine. Okay, now what we've got to do is implement selection. So when I press Control or whatever key you want to use, I actually add to my initials. So let's just set that up. Okay, so in my key code, so if I scroll down. Um, control entry I called it just need to set up some code so I'm going to say if gm dot input manager dot key press and I'm going to do press this time because I, I don't want to get multiple entries and I'm going to use the left control key okay use main too much um, right so if I press left control if it's just a normal character I am going to um, that's selected in the menu and it'll be these will be the names of all the menu items that I can check for so I'm going to do a little switch so I'm just going to do that switch switch um, and we're going to switch on this dot selected name and we're going to say case um, if it's well I'm going to put a default Okay, because anything other than the special characters rub and end, we want to do this for. We want to say initials plus equals um, this dot selected name. Hopefully, because we'll we'll check that now. Hopefully, when we run that, what will happen is. We will add that on, so I'm going to say A. Ah, 
find out what's happening there. I'm having to hold it down. Right, hang on. This is all to do with this control entry being every tenth of a second, this. Um, okay, I'm going to move that because I want this to be checked for the key press, that's the problem. I'm going to just put it in that display code. If I cut it out right, I don't. <coughs> um, and run it again so that it's running quite often so that the key press is going to get detected properly. And so what was happening is it wasn't detecting. So now it, it's firing immediately. Now you can see the problem. I haven't got any limit on the number of characters. Now in your um, high score, you probably, let's have a look, where was high score created? Our score table, we probably set a maximum size. If we go to the default code in the score table, you'll see that I did XXX, which meant three characters. So I don't want any more than three characters. So on my high score menu, I'm only going to add it, I need to check, so I need to say if initials e dot length is less than 3, then we'll add a character on. Okay, so we'll do that. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to say, well, well, if they've got three characters, let's move to the end character. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little check so I'm going to say if initial after doing that if initials dot length equals three then I am going to say this dot select and I want to select the pipe symbol that pipey one that one that was leaning over so that's my end character okay and I'll show you something you can do nicely to tidy this up because that looks minging at the minute right so let's just see what happens so I'm going to put HB and then I'm going to put an A. Ah, got to three characters, it's on end. So every time I press, it just goes straight back to end. So it's not going to add a new character. Okay, let's get the rub working. Oh, well, let's get end working. So if we get to end, so if we say case, let's, so I'm in the uh, key code. Let's put the other case in for rub and when we can put the code in later. So if we detect a less than sign, that means we want to rub a character out. So if we've done end, we want to do the, the um, score entry, which was make entry. Okay, so we're just going to say make entry. So if they pressed left control when they're on the end part of the menu, then we'll run the make entry and we, we've still got that to write yet. Okay. Right, the rub, you can do this a few different ways. We want to take one character off. Now, what we can do is, the easiest way is to say, let's use the string helper that I built for the engine that's got a nice handy function called reduce length by. Um, so we give it the text that we want it to look at and we want to reduce it by one character. And that will handle not having any characters reducing the number of errors you got. So let's ju let's just see if the rub works. So I'll, I'll put that. I want to rub that out. Rub, rub. Let's put a space in there. Uh, and then put a dead. No, I've rubbed that out. I meant to put something completely different to that. So the rub's working. And let's just make sure. So and then end quits. Right, so the final bit we've got to do um, is write the code for make entry. But before we do that, I do not like these because they look a bit alien to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of constants. Okay, so const, well, let's make it a string. And we're going to call one rub item. And that's going to be equal to that less than and then we're going to do another string called end entry I'm going to call it and that is equal to the funny character there okay so that's 
generally under the escape key. You might have to hold down shift to get it. Depends on the keyboard. Right, so I'm going to use those in place of. So I'm going to do this. So I'm going to say plus rub item plus end entry. And I don't have to have them funny characters there. And then when I'm testing, I can do the same thing. I can say rub item and end entry. Good use of constants, that, because it makes this read better. Select end entry. Okay. Just moving on my chair there, hopping around. Right, so the last bit we've got to do is make entry. So you should already have the code to do this. Now, when we um, showed the menu, we captured the score, which we stored in new score. We've now got the initials, so we should be able to create and add a new score. Now, if we go back to the high score display code, this is how you add a new score, because when the def in the default score table, code that you wrote, we had to create this. So let's just copy this code, but then we're going to modify it. So I've copied it there. So we create a new score. Now, the first thing that's going to cause us problems is we've already used the name new score here. So I'm going to come up with uh, a different name for this. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to entry. Okay. So we need to then, because we're only making one score, we can actually condense this into one line. So we're going to say new list object. So this is a linked list, what we're creating. Now, looking at this, see, I've copy pasted, but I'm only using it as a reference to make it easier to follow. So I'm going to add to entry the score. So I'm going to say add. And the score I got was new score, the value I stored. Okay, remember that was that was there. We passed this parameter when we showed the menu. So we could store it ready for doing the other things. If you have got other information, like you might have lap time, if you're doing a race game, or percentage hits, you'll have to pass those values as well so that you've got them all to make the entry. Okay, so delete that line, we've done that one. And then we just need to put the initials in. So entry.add, and we're going to add the initials, whatever they are. Okay, that we've hopefully just built up. So that's that line done. And then we just need to add it to the score table. So we can just say this dot add score. No, we, no, 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 we don't need a bird, Eric. No, the, to the score table. So DM score table. Now, if that doesn't come up, you need to go back to your high score display, go right up to the top and check that you've put static on the score table line so that we can reference that. So we can say score table dot add score and that's going to be our new entry. Okay, so that should be everything complete. So we've put them, we've got the marker in there saying right score entry is complete so that our code in general logic which is here, which is sat there waiting for that, knows that it got to the high score display. Well, let's just try it. Uh, I'm going to have Baz. I'm going to be Baz today. And I'm going to say end. And there you go, Baz has got the top score. Funny font, the, that font, that um, silkworm font, because the Z looks like a 2. Um, yeah, but there you go. Right, so that's that's it really. Um, now we have got a system that is using a track. Now we could make any track. We didn't have to create a track like this. We could have made a circle or whatever. Um, but if you want to mess about with this, I mean, I made twenty nine points on this track. Let's let's um, instead of, let's just come at the. I'm going to comment those lines out and just ch show you how to change the track. But this is just general track stuff. So track definition uh, tdh equals. And I'm going to use one of the advanced functions of the track helper. And I'm going to create a sine wave. 
I'm going to do a simple sine wave. There's, there's lots of different ones. I'm going to do this on the next line. So I need to give it a name again, but the name's just for debug purposes, really. Um, uh, there are other reasons, but I'm just going to say high entry again. And then I'm going to say number of points. So I want 29 points because I've got my alphabet, my space, and then my two special characters. So I want 29 points. Um, where do I want it to start? Well, let's start at 100 again. Where do I want it to end? 12. Uh, what was it? G M dot screen size dot right minus 100. Um, always use this. I've put these are all my XML comments from the engine, so it's telling me what wave amplitude is here. Vertical size, so the height of it, and that is um, half the full pitch so that's from the middle to the peak or to a trough not trough to peak so it's half of the um, size so I'm gonna sit this in the middle of the screen so I'm gonna make that 200 uh, the frequency I'm gonna do one complete sine wave so that's uh, gonna go woo. I might not do the sound effect uh, center right I want it to be the screen center screen size dot center dot y uh, the next one is the depth, so just just a thousand. You can do 3D stuff with this. If you turned on um, perspective projection, you can get some awesome effects, especially if you put it on your timer to rotate the track, and then you can start getting really crazy. Um, but let's just see what that does. Let's see if it crashes, actually. Oh, build error is what we've done. TDH does not exist. Brrr, I've named it wrong, haven't I? Capital H. And there you go. So you don't alter any of the code. And you've got a cool sound wave. Remember, I am running this in the wrong place. So let's just put WWV. It'll automatically end and add it to the score table. Same score. It sorts automatically. And that's all she wrote. As I say, I can't remember what the key is to stop the video, so I'm going to have to go back to Cam Studio to stop it. Thank you very much.